as you can see from the objective, uh, in this video we're going to take a look, uh, another look at the definition of the derivative and we're going to look at the various forms of the derivative. So if you are in my class, I'd like for you to find this particular warm-up in your packet. Um, I'd like for you to do the warm-up first and then come back and resume the video and see how you're doing on the warm-up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take care of this warm-up and then we'll get on to the lesson. So in the warm-up, you have a function 2x cubed minus 4x plus 7 sine x minus 21 e to the x, and you are supposed to be finding the derivative of that function. So this is just an opportunity to practice the power rule and some of the derivative, um, some derivative procedures that you learn. So if we find the derivative on the left-hand side, we get rid of y prime. The derivative on the right-hand side, using the power rule, is 6x squared. The derivative of the second term using the power rule is 4. We know that the we've memorized that the derivative of sine is cosine and the 7 is going to come along as a coefficient so we get 7 cosine of x. We've also memorized that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x so we get 21 e to the x and that would be the general derivative or the slope generator for that particular function. In problem number two, you've been given a graph and you have been asked to examine the graph and determine any values of x where the function is, first of all, not differentiable. Now, when we talk about differentiability, we know that we look for sharp turns or cusps. And in this particular case, we have, um, whether you want to call it a sharp turn, well, actually, it is a sharp turn in this case. We have a cusp at positive 2 and at negative 2. So we already know that the function is not differentiable at x equal to negative 2 and x equal to positive 2. But we have to justify why there is not differentiability there. So in this particular case, if you look on the left and the right hand side of negative 2, the slopes on the left hand side are not agreeing with the slopes on the right hand side. So the way that we say that using a derivative definition, you'll recall, is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left-hand side. Um, and this function, I don't know that it's named, we'll call it f of x. So the function, the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left-hand side of the function in general minus the function evaluated at negative 2 over x minus negative 2. Remember that part of your derivative definition is just the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that limit is not equal to the derivative on the right hand side which is expressed as the limit as x approaches negative 2. But from the right hand side function minus the function evaluated at that value over x minus negative 2. And of course you can make x minus negative 2 into x plus 2. Um, for justifying the function not being differentiable at x equal to 2, we're going to do exactly the same thing except for um, the value that the limit is approaching is positive 2 from the left positive 2 from the right, and then instead of having a negative 2, um, and a negative 2, and a negative 2, and a negative 2, we'll have a positive 2. And that would basically be saying that the derivative on the left-hand side of 2 is not agreeing with the derivative on the right-hand side of 2. Uh, the next part of this warm-up asks, where is this function not continuous? And this function is continuous uh, at all values of x. So I'll just write continuous, continuous everywhere because there are no breaks, gaps, or holes anywhere in the function. Okay, so that's your warm-up for this lesson. Now let's take a look at the definition of the derivative. And what you're going to see here, if you were in my class, are things that we have already talked about. Uh, we're going to review them and we're going to kind of just give them a little bit different look. So you know already that the definition of derivative, symbolically or mathematically expressed, is 
the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, remember this is y number 2, minus the function y number 1, and this h down here is x2 minus x1, just reminding you that this really is a slope formula. The derivative as h approaches 0 is the general definition of derivative, and this is the general form, as I just said, and it is a slope generator. That's kind of the lingo that I use. And what this function will do is it will, uh, it is a formula, per se, that will generate the derivative at any value of x. So in other words, if we were to have the function y equal to 3x squared plus 2x, and we found the derivative, we now know how to do that by the power rule. But if we did it by using the limit definition, we would still get the same derivative of 6x plus 2. So what you see is that this is the general derivative. It is a formula that can be used. And if I wanted to know the slope of this curve, let's say at x equal to 2, x equal to 3, x equal to 4, all I would have to do is substitute those x values into my slope generator, and I can get the slope of the tangent line at any point on that curve. So that's why it is the derivative in general. Now, similarly, if I only want to find the derivative at one particular point instead of the derivative in general, then I can use what I'll call the point-specific form of the derivative. So this is what I call point specific. And the reason it's point specific is because it is at a particular value of x. In other words, in this case, x is equal to c. And this formula is only going to generate the derivative at that one particular value of x. So this formula is less powerful than the general derivative because you can only use it for one particular point. And as you can see in what I've written, if we evaluate this expression, we will have the slope of the line tangent to f of x only at x equal to c. So we have point specific versus the general format. And again, what makes the first format in general is x can represent any value of the domain, not just a particular value of c like we have in example number two. Notice the similarities. We are still dealing with y number 2. This would be my y number 2, my y number 1, x number 2 minus x number 1. So the big idea all the way around is that we're finding slope. It's just a matter of are we finding instant slope in general or are we finding instant slope at one particular value of x. Now take a look at number 2 and compare that to number 3. In number 3, we're looking at the derivative of a function also at a point. So you can see that these two forms of the derivative represent exactly the same thing, just like we had before. It's at a particular value c, so x equal to c. This is called the alternate form of the derivative. And these two derivative formulas, let's hold on a second for the bell. So these two particular formulas will do exactly the same thing. They're going to generate a point-specific derivative at one value of x, and the value of x that we're looking at is c. In this case, you notice, um, I'm just going to rewrite this so I can add a few things in here. We're still finding the limit, but this time as x approaches, this time as x approaches c. Notice back here in the last def or, uh, derivative we had delta x approaching 0. Now look at my denominator. I still have change in x, it, but it's x minus c, and if x is approaching c, you can still see that this denominator is approaching 0, so we have the same kind of thing going on. f of x is my y number 1, and f of c is my y number 2. So these two formulas do the same thing, But in one case, delta x is approaching 0, and in the other case, x is approaching c. So you're probably going to have to spend some time studying and looking at why those are the same, and we'll talk more about that in class. 
All right, let's go to the next page, or let's go down to the bottom. So how is, let, let's try to get an understanding of what's going on here. We have a generic point down here at the bottom, C, F of C. So in other words, we have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And then we have another point, X, F of X. So the other point on the curve is x, f of x. So if we go back to when we learned how to find the derivative by the definition, if I draw that secant line, I have two points. And if I want to find the slope, change in y over change in x, then I would get y number 2 is f of x minus y number 1 is f of c, x number 2 is x and x number one is c. So you can see where that definition comes from. It's simply a slope and then if we want to find the derivative of the tangent line at c, we know that we have to let that distance between x and c approach zero because we don't really want any distance between there. So this is the alternate form of the definition. Again, it is point specific and that's part of what you're going to need to be able to see when you're looking at these next problems. Uh, one of the things that they're going to expect you, that College Board is going to be able to expect you to do on the AP test is recognize the derivative. Uh, they're very unlikely going to ask you to um, find the derivative by the limit process, but they expect you to recognize it. So let's take a look at the directions in the examples, and this is what your homework is going to be like. Without evaluating, tell what each expression represents. We may actually evaluate it, but the key here is identifying what's going on. So, first of all, take a look at the entire thing. And you notice that h is approaching 0. So some things that you're going to want to figure out first is whether or not this is a general or point-specific derivative. Now, what you're looking for for whether the function is representing a general or point specific derivative, notice we have the variable of h, the variable of h. Notice in the back we have the actual function, this is our f of x, and that h is approaching zero. All right, so I already know that this is going to be a general derivative because it's not at a particular value of x, and we'll talk about how you know when it is a value of x and when not, but part of the key is is looking back here. This is a variable expression versus the actual generated y value. Now all of this stuff up in the front represents f of x plus h. So you basically have to decompose this function and, and that if you're smart you'll recognize that the function that we're finding the derivative of is sitting right back here. So this is the derivative statement. What does it represent? This, this expression represents the derivative of x squared plus 3x minus 1. And this is the general, as I already circled on the other side of the board, this is the general derivative. That's what it represents. Now, if we were to actually calculate this or um, say what this is equal to, if it represents the derivative of x squared plus 3x minus 1, then the expression itself, by the power rule, is equal to 2x plus 3. That's what that entire expression is equal to. Um, but the main thing that you want to see here is that it's the derivative. You want to be able to identify the function, whether it's a general derivative, and if possible, you can, you can calculate it. Sometimes you'll be able to at this point, and maybe other times not. All right, let's take a look at number two. And again, what I would also suggest as you're doing these is to look um, at the notes that we just took on the other side, at the three forms of derivative, and compare them until you get used to doing this. All right, so in number two, I notice that delta x is approaching zero. In the front of the minus sign, I have f of, now notice this time, instead of having an h, I have a number, pi over two. So this is already telling me that I'm looking very likely at a point-specific derivative, meaning that I'm finding the derivative at one particular value of x, 
um, and not the derivative in general. So this is the derivative of c plus delta x. And then in the back, this is our f of c. Now that's very important to understand. f of c is a y value that is generated by substituting substituting c into f of x. So f of c, 1 is the y value. The x value is sitting over here, or the, the particular c value. So the coordinate that we're dealing with in this case is pi over 2 is the x value. 1 is the y value that you get when you substitute pi over 2 into the original function. It is a point-specific derivative, so this function or this expression represents the derivative of. Now, what function do we have? Well, we can see that if we take out all of the guts that was substituted into the function, <clears throat> we pull out the pi over 2 plus delta x, that that was originally the derivative of sine x at x equal to pi over 2 point-specific derivative. Now, what this expression equals, if we find the derivative of sine, we know that the derivative of cosine, excuse me, the derivative of sine is cosine. We're going to evaluate that at pi over 2. Cosine at pi over 2 is the x-coordinate at pi over 2 on the unit circle, which is 0. So that's actually the answer to this expression, but the expression itself represents the point-specific derivative of sine x at pi over 2. In problem number 3, again, take a look at what's behind the subtraction. We have a 0. So that's leading me to believe that we're working with a point-specific derivative. And if you look back on the other page, we're looking at the alternate form of the derivative, which was f of x minus f of c. Okay, this is a specific y value. This is the function itself that we're finding the derivative of. And this is the value of c, or the x value that we're finding the derivative at. Now, another place you can find that x value, or the c value, I should say, is the limit as what we are approaching. So this function, or this expression, represents the derivative of what function? tangent x, it's point specific, so we would be evaluating at x equal to pi, and at this point you have not found the derivative of tangent x yet, so we'll just leave it with what the expression represents. Now when you do your homework, um, which you would find on Edline, um, this is what you want to use to go back and try to evaluate those particular expressions and explain what they mean. Um, so if you have questions, come and see me in class.